it's Thursday and Happy New Year to us all. I hope you've all been having a really good break. Mine was pretty delightful. I got to see a bunch of cows. And I, I do mean actual cows, not my family. My family are lovely. Also, some of you guys have been sending me through photos of your creations over December and oh my god, you are so freaking talented. Um, I tried to respond to all of the messages as they came through, but just in case I missed any, I do just want to say that they make me really, really happy when I receive them, so thank you to anybody who shared them. Now, on to our regular programming. So for the first pattern of the year in 2021, we made the ox for Chinese New Year, which isn't actually until February, and I just thought that would be a really nice way to start 2022 as well. So basically, today we're going to be making a tiger. Now, coming up in January, there will also be a squirtle pattern, because what my patrons want, my patrons get. But I'm also working on another video at the moment where I'm going to go through a bunch of requested Pokemon and cartoon characters and basically show how I would break them down into more easily designed chunks. If you missed my community post about this, feel free to leave your requests in the comments down below. I am going to try and get through as many of them as I can. So that should be fun. <laughs> Let's get into tools and materials. Okay, so for today's project, you're going to need 8-ply, 100% acrylic yarn in three colours. So you're going to need a main colour for your tiger, as well as a colour for your highlights and a colour for your stripes. Now, because it is Year of the Water Tiger, I'm going to be making a blue one today. But as you can see here, it also works up really nicely in orange. Now, regardless of what colour you're making your tiger, you're also going to need just a really small amount of black and a really small amount of pink to stitch on his face. A pair of 18mm safety eyes, so anything from 16mm up to about 20mm should work for this pattern. As well as your 3.5mm hook, scissors, pins and needles, and some stuffing. But that's it! So a written version of this pattern will be available in my store and will be provided to my patrons and I will leave a link to both in the description down below for anybody who is interested. Okay, so we're going to start by making the head and body piece. Now for that we're going to start at the tip of the nose and work our way back to the butt. We are going to be working colour changes to work white on the underside of his face. You'll be using whatever highlight colour you chose for that. But the rest of his stripes we will be just sewing on afterwards. So to start this piece you're going to grab your 3.5mm hook and your white or highlight colour. And we're going to start with a magic ring of six, like so. Okay, so in row two we have our first colour change, but first up we're going to work an increase, a single crochet, and then two increases to get around to where we want our first colour change to be. Like so. Now in this pattern, you're always going to be doing your colour changes in the stitch before before you want the new colour to be active. So that means I want to change in this last stitch that we just worked. So I'm going to frog it and I'm going to use that stitch to change to my main tiger colour, which for me is this light blue. So to do colour changes, what you do is insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over with your old colour and pull up a loop and you should see that you have two loops of your old colour on your hook. I'm then going to hold that colour out of the way, grab a strand of the colour I'm changing to and hold it alongside it down the, in the same direction. I'm going to pinch my new colour at the base of the stitch to hold it in place, yarn over with it and complete the stitch. So you should see there that leaves you with a single crochet completed in your old colour but your new colour is on the hook ready to go. So in your main colour, we're going to work a single crochet and an increase. And because there are so many colour changes in this pattern, I'm going to be working those with the carry under technique, which means that I'll just be working my stitches over the top of the colour I'm not currently using so that I can carry that strand forward with me as I go. So in the last stitch of that increase, we want to change back to our white. So same as we changed to our blue in the first place, I've got two loops of my blue on my hook. I'm going to hold that strand out of the way. And then my white should be right up there with me ready to go because I've been stitching over the top of it. So I'm going to yarn over and pull through to complete the stitch. So that is the end of round two. So you should have three blue stitches and seven white stitches. And in round three, that's exactly what we're actually going to do. We're going to work seven single crochet in our white, not forgetting to work over the top of our blue to carry it around with us. And in that final stitch, that seventh stitch, we're going to change back to our blue and work three blue stitches, but we're not changing back to our white just yet. So that's the little nub that you should have at the moment. So we are gonna work 10 more rows, changing backwards and forwards between our white and our blue, not forgetting to carry whatever color we're not currently stitching with under our work. So that's where we're at at the end of row 13. You might need to poke the forehead around to balance out where your white is sitting, but it should be evenly along the bottom of the face. So at this point we're going to stop and position our eyes. Now your eyes should go in between rows 6 and 7 and you want about 5 stitches visible between them. And you want to position them so that the edges just touch the white. 
and snap the backs on. Okay, so from here we will be working up the rest of the body. And I know that the nose is a little bit pointy at the moment. You don't need to worry too much about that. We're going to add some stitching at the end that should give him the proper tiger face. So from here on out, we will be working entirely in your main tiger color. So for me, it's the blue, which means I'm going to be trimming off this white. There we go. So row 14 actually starts out using front post single crochet. So the front post stitching is what's going to help slope the back upwards. So with crochet stitching, we are normally working through the loops. With front post stitching, we are going to be working around the post of the stitch instead. And because this is front post stitching, I'm going to insert my hook from the front of the piece and back around to the front of the piece and work my single crochet around that post. Now you should note that, that will leave you with one set of loops free on the outside and one set of loops free where we didn't actually work for that stitch. And for row 14, we're gonna start by working four of those in total, like so, before swapping back to regular single crochet as in through the loops for 16 stitches. Now, because these rows are partially front post and partially just regular stitches, I'm going to recommend that every time you finish working a section of front post stitching, you count backwards from your hook to work out where your next stitch should go. Because the thing about front post stitching is it's not always clear. The next stitch might go there or it could go over here. And it's honestly the fastest way to end up with too many or too few stitches in your round. So I know that row 14 is 24 stitches in total. So I can count backwards from my hook here. So I know that my next stitch should actually go here. So the next part of this row is 16 single crochet around before finishing the row with four more front post single crochet. Like so. So there's nothing really that unusual about the rest of the rows. So we're going to just work up the next 15, which should bring you to the end of the body section. So after row 28, when you're down to 18 stitches around, we are gonna stop and stuff it quite firmly. Make sure you start with small pieces of stuffing to ensure that they get to the tip of the nose and into both cheeks before moving on to larger pieces just to finish stuffing the rest of the piece. Then work rows 29 and 30 and finish off. So there is the main head and body piece made and you'll note that the face is looking a little bit foxy and we're gonna actually work on that now. So to start with, we're gonna form his cheeks. If you look at the orange one here, you'll note that we've actually stitched around to give his face an extra corner. And it's a little bit more visible on the purple one here where we're stitching in these little white stripes. So I'm gonna take my needle and a little bit of my white. And what we're going to do is, it should be row 10, which should be, which should be the first row where your main color is bigger than the white so it's this row here starting at this stitch here which you can see is equal with the top of the white section I'm just going to stitch over the top of it pulling it in tight to form a little bit of a corner to the face so I'm going to keep stitching until I have covered six stitches down on both sides of the face okay so you can see there we have formed a cheek on either side of the face that's what it looks like from behind you can see it forms this little ridge and I have exited my needle out through the starting magic ring. And that's because the next thing we're going to do is form his snout. So with your white yarn emerging from the center starting ring, what you're going to do is count three stitches out. So one, two, three, and keeping to the white stitches only, I'm going to insert my needle and loop around back through that starting magic ring. And I'm going to continue that down, keeping the width consistent at three stitches until I'm covering three to four stitches high as well. They don't all have to emerge through the magic ring, but they should form a straight line down the center of the face because that's going to be the middle of the nose. And when you're happy with how the first side of your nose looks, you're going to Flip it around and repeat the same thing on the other side to form the second side of the snout. Okay, so with that done, trim off any excess white and tuck in all of your ends. You will thank yourself for working neatly. And there is your face so far. At this point, you're gonna grab your pink and we're just gonna finish off that nose. And what you're going to want to do here is we're going to do one long stitch along the top of the nose. So thread your needle in. So one long stitch across the top. And you want to make sure that your needle is exiting just under 
where we started that first side of the nose and that's because this nose is comprised of two stitches. Once again, you don't want to pull this too hard. You want to very slowly, carefully positioning it as you go, gently tug it into position. So that's your first stitch there. And now we're going to do one more stitch just directly underneath. You can hopefully see here that we've got our long stitch on top and then we've got where the needle emerged, which is just sort of diagonally in from that first edge. And we're going to stitch to roughly the same point on the other side. Exiting our needle just anywhere else in the beastie. Once again, not pulling too tightly, just gently tugging into place. Snip off your pink and tuck any ends in. So at the moment it's reading very kitten and we need to take it from kitten to tiger. <laughs> so grabbing your black, we're just going to put a black line at the bottom of where we've stitched our nose there. So inserting your hook from the other side and out through the middle. Like so. And then out one side. Then back in one side, just like that. Again, we don't want to pull too tightly. Make sure it's in the right position before you lock it really in. Notice that I threaded my needle out the other side and I'm going to enter it back in at the same point to finish off that mouth. And when you're happy, you can pull it a little bit tighter because it will tuck it down inside the white a little bit more, give it a bit more of a mouth look. So trim off and tuck away any ends. Okay, so we could stop and stitch our stripes on at this point if we wanted to, but instead we're going to make some more pieces first. So, so pop your head and body to one side. So next up we're going to make the front paws. So front paws are identical to each other. We're going to start at the front of the paw. Uh, work up a couple of rows in white, then swap to our main tiger colour and finish off the rest of the arm. All of the stripes on this arm we are going to stitch on using a needle and some yarn after we finish making the piece. Adding just enough stuffing to fill the bottom two thirds of the piece. Okay, so now that you have your paw, what we're going to be doing is grabbing our darker colour. So on these two I've used black and on our water tiger I'm using a dark blue. And what we're going to be doing is stitching on some stripes. So we're going to start with the foot where we're going to stitch on some toe lines. So to do that, first you need to shape the piece by squishing flat the drumstick part of it and flattening out the foot by giving it a pinch. So you should have a flat top of the leg and then a bulbous leg piece and that's because it's going to fit against the body like so. So what I'm going to do is on the underside of the foot I'm going to count three rows down from the top and roughly one third in from the side I'm going to just insert my needle all the way through to the other side of the foot then wrap the yarn around and insert it through the same opening merging to roughly two stitches over. I'm then going to pull that quite tightly across the top of the foot. So there is our first toe line and I'm going to do another one right next to it. It doesn't matter if these are a little bit rough because they're toes, <laughs> but there are our toe lines. Now the next thing we're going to do is trace around the line between our white and our blue. So you'll note that when I stitched the second toe on I poked the needle out already on that border line and what I'm going to do is use this yarn to just trace that zigzag edge the whole way around. I'm just working my needle through the gaps between the stitches so I didn't need to use my sharper needle for this part. And once I'm done tracing that line we're going to then stitch on some stripes. Now this is going to be the left leg. So you'll see here we have a left leg and a right leg and we only want stripes around the outer edge of the body. They don't need to go the whole way around. I'll only want stripes starting in about the middle of the front and going around to about the middle of the back. So I'm going to count two blue rows up and that's where my needle's going to come out of after finishing that stripe around the paw. I'm then going to wrap this yarn following the line between the stitches around to the same point on the back and then stitch in. So every two rows we're going to put a little half stripe. So that's the first stripe there. Trace it back around. And if it's not falling in the right spot you can just like pick it up and move it a little bit. We're not pulling these super tight. It's the second stripe. I'm just going to continue that up the rest of the leg. 
Once you reach the drumstick part of the leg, you don't even need to bring the stripes in the whole way around. They just need to be little ones along that rounded edge. So tuck any ends in, and if you need to, squish the foot and the upper leg back into position. You're then going to make one just like it for the other side of the body, so the stripes will run around the other side of it. Okay, cool. So pop those front legs to one side as well. We are now going to make the back legs, which are made in a very similar manner to the front legs, where we do our first few rows in white, then swap to our main colour again and work up the rest of the leg. And when we stuff, we're only stuffing the foot. So that's the piece all stitched up and we are just going to squeeze this toe out into a flat foot, just like that. There's a fly in here. If you see a fly, his name is Ferdinand and he's just a fact of life in living in Australian summer. We're trying to keep him off camera. Anywho, uh, so next up we're going to use some of our dark blue again to stitch on toes and the line between the two colours, just like I did with the front feet. Sorry, the fly has literally moved into one of my lamps. I touched him. I'm sorry, but I managed to touch him. I think I can get him one second ago. Okay, update. We have touched Ferdinand. I touched Ferdinand. You did touch Ferdinand. Just like that. And keep in mind that we are going to bend the tip of this toe up to form a foot as well. So it's not just a toe, it is in fact the whole foot. And next up, we're going to put stripes up one side of the leg, just like we did with the front leg again. So. As you can see here, the stripes don't have to go the whole way around. They just have to come to about the halfway point that we're going to see down the leg. And I'm going to put one stripe every two rows of stitches. Just like that. And you're going to need another one of those as well. Note that one of them has stripes going on one side and one of them has them on the other. So there are his back legs. So next up we're going to be making the tail. And it is just a basic tube starting in our white and once again changing to our main colour after a couple of rows. So once you've stitched up the main piece of the tail, which we do not stuff by the way, we're just going to take our dark blue once again and stitch on the border between the two colours and then just some stripes that go the whole way around the tail. So with that we only have one piece left to make and that is the ears. Now the ears have a lot of different colour changes to them. We start at the back at this white circle because I don't know if you know this but tigers have white spots on the backs of their ears and then we're going to do a couple of rounds in black and then swap to our orange and then swap back to our white to finish off. So we're going to grab our white to start with and work a magic ring of six single crochet. Like so. Now in that last stitch of white, we're going to change to our dark color. And we do that the same as we've done any other color change in this particular pattern. We're then going to work a row of six increases to bring us to 12 stitches around. Like so. So that's the end of round two. Uh, and here is where it gets a little weird. Instead of continuing in a spiral, what we're going to do instead is chain one and turn our work so that we're working back into the stitches we've just made. And we're going to work 11 single crochet around once again in our dark blue. And in the 11th stitch, I'm going to be changing to my light blue. Now, because we did a chain one and turn at the start of this row, I currently have the back or the wrong side of the piece facing me. So I'm going to do my color change on the side facing me as well. All that means is that I'm holding the yarn that I'm attaching on the side facing me instead of on the back of the piece. So that's what the wrong or back side of my piece currently looks like and that's what the, the right side or the good side of my piece currently looks like. So I'm going to chain one and turn again. And at this point I am just going to clean up some of these threads that I have hanging around on the back. So I'm just going to trim off my dark blue and trim off my white. And any of these really long tails, I'm just going to give a little haircut to as well. That's a bit better. Okay, so for the next row, we're going to work 10 back post single crochet. Now the reason it's 10 and not 11 is just because otherwise we'd be working around this first post, which can be a little bit difficult and honestly doesn't add anything to the pattern. So why up the difficulty if we don't have to? So we've done front post in this pattern already. Back post just means we're going to insert our hook around the post from the back of the piece back around to the back of the piece. That first one might be a little bit tough, but after that they should get easier. So we're going to work 10 of those around in total, and that's going to give us a nice rim to our ear. And in the 10th stitch, we're going to change back to our white, like so, and then chain one and turn. And this is the final row, so this is the row that's going to take it from looking like, I don't know, half of Captain America's shield <laughs> to actually an ear. And what I'm going to do is work five decreases back along those light blue stitches. So not forgetting to work into that first light blue one, which is going to be hiding from you a little bit. And 
five. And finally, the last stitch we're going to do is that first decrease in this round. I'm just going to go back and slip stitch into it and finish off. Trim off any other strands that are still attached and tuck all of these little tails inside. So you see there we've got like this little pocket type thing and what you're going to do is pinch around that row of back post stitching that we did and it should form a little cup shape like an ear. So that's the back and that's the front. And you're going to need two of those exactly the same. So now we have all of our pieces made. We have two things left to do. So the first is to stitch stripes onto our head and body piece. And the other thing is of course, assembly. Now I personally find it easier to stitch the stripes onto the body before I attach all of the pieces. However, I would encourage you to maybe watch this section the whole way through first before you decide whether or not you want to attach your pieces, just because they can be a useful guide for knowing where you don't need to add stripes. It's just after making two of them, I've kind of got a feel for it. Now all of these stripes will be done in our dark blue again. So I'm going to start with the face stripes. So as you can see on the orange fella here, he has sort of three main triangular stripes on his forehead and then one little triangle stripe on either side of his face. So we're going to start with those. So first up, identify a point in between his eyes right around there. Now you can mark all of these points with pins first if you would like. I'm just going to kind of go for it. So I'm going to start by threading my needle in from just somewhere else in the head and out through that point that I just showed you with a pin. So we're going for that main major triangle first. It looks like a little Star Trek symbol if you're into that. So we're going to count one stitch to the side and then three stitches up and we're going to insert our needle again, emerging back at our starting point, just like that. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So one stitch over and then one, two, three, insert our stitch in there. Excuse me, I've rotated my piece, insert my needle in there. And then I want to emerge two stitches up from our starting point, so just like that. And then what I'm going to do is insert my needle the far end of the stripe and across like a little triangle and then back to that middle starting point. Now these are where I'm placing my stripes. You don't need to be this precise with it. Put them wherever you feel works. And also I just want to say that if you're familiar with like needle felting, this is also a good chance to do that. I've purchased a needle felting tool but I've not used it yet and this just really didn't feel like a beginner project to start with. So there's that. I'm then going to work just two open triangles, one on either side of that main middle forehead one. Like so. And another little triangle just in the corner of the eye. It can cross over into the white because stripes do that sometimes, but you only want it to be about two stitches big in any one direction. And make sure you balance it by putting it on the same place on the other side as well. All right, so that's probably the hardest one of these stripes. They're all easier from here. So next up, we're just going to place four or five little triangle shapes down his back. You can just work these as regular stripes as well if that's your preference, same as we did on the legs, but I'm gonna work mine as triangles. So I'm starting two rows behind where I finished the forehead triangles and I'm keeping them relatively centered. You might wanna put some guide pins in to make sure that you don't go down the sides. Remember, they're gonna be covered by the tops of the legs and so you don't need to double stitch or, or double your efforts there. So I would recommend keeping these one row apart. So I'm just going to continue that down his back until I reach the top of his butt. So I tried some more square shapes on this guy here, but you can see the triangles are probably a nicer look. So I'm just going to trim off all of my loose ends there and tuck them in. And finally, I am just going to use a little bit of my white to stitch on two tiny little eyebrow dots. So you can see them here on this orange fella, two little dots there. So just at the upper corner of each eye like so. So now we're going to start our assembly. I'm going to start with his front paws. So keeping in mind that the stripes face outwards, I'm going to start by lining up this shoulder joint a couple of rows behind that, that row of stitches we put in to form that corner. Keeping in mind that the way this shape works, you want to be able to curve that paw up. So that's the shoulder pinned in place. I'm going to curve this paw up and pin it roughly between the bottom of the head and where that cheek line is. I'm going to repeat this process on the other side with the other paw. So that is where they go. Next up, I'm going to do the ears. So you'll see we should have a two row gap between our forehead triangles and our first stripe on the back of the head. That's roughly where these ears are going to be positioned. So remembering that the dark side faces towards the back, 
gonna pin this one in place and then show you where I pinned it because it's a bit tricky. And then you want the outer edge to line up with the top of that row of cheek stitches. So that should be a, a good little landmark for you to know where to position these. And pin them in such a way that it allows them to curl over a little bit. You want that pocket to form, you want it to look like an ear. And if you're afraid it doesn't look too much like a tiger, give it a pinch at the tip. It's a, bit, a little bit more of a point. It's hard to accomplish a lot with so few stitches. And I'm even going to tuck a pin down inside to hold the inner part of that ear in place as well for when we stitch it on. And once again, do the same thing on the other side. Now, did you know that stripes on a tiger are as unique as a thumbprint? At least I'm pretty sure that's true. I could be wrong. I love it. You've got a complicated knots on Thursday and then a little bit of a fact check on Friday when I have to um, <laughs> correct anything that I've said. So that is where his ears are going to go. Now, before I do the legs and the tail, I'm going to stop and sew these on because it's a lot easier to do when you can hold him like a popsicle. Now, I am just going to use a little bit of my main color to stitch him on, but honestly, you can use any of your three colors because it's not going to be super visible. So I'm going to work around the shoulder of each leg. And then I'm going to just put a simple stitch at the foot to attach it to the face. The rest of the leg doesn't have to be sewn down. And then around the base of the ear. Don't be afraid to insert your needle all the way through the ear if that helps you secure it on a little better. Okay, so with the front half of our tiger assembled, we now need to move to the back half. So I'm going to start with the tail. So the tail goes at the top of the butt there. It's kind of like he's in a pounce position. You could include a little bit of wire in the tail, I guess, if you wanted to give it a little bit of extra posability. I haven't done that with any of the examples I'm showing here, just because I think it stands up kind of quirkily on its own without too much help. So tail goes at the top of the butt. And then I guess these are the trickiest piece to try and position. Make sure that you identify which one goes on which side. And the idea is that they that he's up on his hind legs and down on his front ones. So you need to kind of position this so that his butt is up in the air like so. Now keeping in mind that we've bent the, the sort of toe of this piece forward to form a foot, that is kind of the shape that we are looking for. Throw a couple of pins in that hind quarter just to get it to hold its position. And on the other side, I'm gonna put one single pin through the middle I'm going to pop him down on his feet. I'm just going to adjust the legs until it's in the right pose. And once it is, a couple more pins should lock it into position. So finally, we're just going to take a little bit more of our main tiger color to stitch around the tops of the hind quarters and around the base of the tail. And there is your finished tiger. All right, so I hope you had fun making tigers with me today. If you're looking for another pattern to work on, there are a lot more over on my channel and you should check it out. Okay, bye.